and Barney Five was born. <laughs> and I love talking to the cast. They're always so warm and welcoming, especially Betty Lynn Belmaloo. She always comes over and gives me a big hug. <laughs> you can see how warm and friendly she is. <laughs> then I heard a voice. It was a voice I knew and I loved. It was the voice of Aunt B. Oh, I turned around and looked. She was smoking a cigarette. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I actually went up to her and I said, Aunt B, you're smoking. She went, that's right, kid. I'm still a hot chick. One fine day, he marched down to that corner drugstore and bought the dummy in the window he had his heart set on. <laughs> he named him Danny. Now, he thought about calling him Fred, and when I asked why he chose Danny, he said, I can put Danny on my fanny. I can't do that with Fred. Fred's dead. <laughs> and years later, when he applied for active duty during World War II, the dummy helped him out. You see, when he put on the application that he was a ventriloquist, well, that's how he got moved into the performer's unit overseas. Stars and stripes. The soldiers put on a show called Stars and Gripes. <laughs> and it was a great training ground for him because he got to work with fellas who were already professional entertainers. Now, Donald had a great act, but after a while, he didn't want to be a ventriloquist anymore. He was tired of lugging that heavy dummy all over the soggy Philippines. He hightailed it on over to the infirmary, found some bandages, wrapped them around the dummy's jaw and head, took that dummy out on stage, and announced to the audience that Danny had a toothache and couldn't talk. <laughs> oh, I've got so many stories. Our new house became my Hollywood hideaway. Dad had a room with a lot of portraits on the wall. There were people he'd worked with, was friends with, or just admired. They were all women. So I call this room our Hall of Dames. <laughs> My favorite was the one in the middle, Arlene Dahl. She'd been a pretty big movie star in the 1950s. And I thought, oh, she's so beautiful. If only she were here now, I'll bet she could help me with my problem. It would be perfect. Here I am. Arlene, you can hear me. Yes, now how can I help you, Karen? Oh, I want to be beautiful. I want to look just like you. Well, I'm afraid you're out of luck. Oh, darn. Well, what, what's the next best thing? Well, you're intelligent. No, I'm really not that smart. Well, then you're a social butterfly. But I can't get out of my cocoon. Well, then what's wrong with you? I'm celebrity adjacent. Everybody thinks of me as not nut. <laughs> Don, Don, the farmer's son Only had one bullet for Barney's gun Not another one like him ever was He knew how to nip it in the bud How can you be so funny? <laughs> I, I want to put that last in a jar. <laughs>